What's going on guys? This is the first video in our series for winter preparedness. So the first thing we need to discuss when it comes to any type of preparedness situation scenario is going to be water, right? We need to have water. Now, it's especially important when we talk about winter preparedness because oftentimes your pipes in your homes can freeze, right? And water will not run through those. So we have to make sure that we have water set aside, right? Now you can have something like an aquatainer, which can hold seven gallons of water, right? We can have water bricks, which you can slide underneath your couches, underneath your furniture. Mason jars, right? You can actually pressure can water in a mason jar and that water is good pretty much indefinitely, right? The main thing to remember when it comes to water is that water does not expire. Water becomes contaminated. If we keep it out of the sun in a cool, dark place, it's perfectly fine. Remember that you're going to need more than one gallon of water per person per day, right? You're gonna need more than that. The amount of water that your body needs, number one, it directly depends on the amount of exertion that your body is undergoing, right? So the more activity you're doing, the more water you're gonna to have to intake, right? Um, it's fuel for the machine, right? In addition to that, you're going to need water for hygiene purposes and also water for cooking. Hygiene is incredibly important, right? There's many different types of bacteria that live on the human body that actually grow on the human body, right? So something like Staphylococcus, staph infection. Um, if you know it grows in our armpits, it grows in our nether regions, right? We have to clean those things pretty regularly. Um, unless, God forbid, we get a cut somewhere where staff is on the body, right? We, we rub our, we scratch our armpit, whatever, and we scratch our arm because it itches, there's a cut on the arm, guess what? Now it's infected with staff, right? Which is a whole different set of problems when we're talking about a survival scenario. So we have to keep our bodies clean, right? So water is for drinking, water is for cleaning, and water is for cooking. So you should prep at least three gallons of water per person per day. If you can get to five, get to five, right? Five is one of the sweet spots, and this is from the UN, right? Five is where you wanna be at. But if you have three gallons, you're gonna be in a pretty decent spot, right? You can make do with that. But just understand that water is for so many other things, right? And we're not even discussing wound irrigation, right? If you have to clean out a wound, you're gonna need water for that as well, right? If you don't have something like a saline wound wash, you're gonna to have to have water to do that, clean water, right? And you can actually make a very, very basic saline solution strictly for uh, irrigating wounds. Now we'll talk about that in the medical portion of this series. So please go ahead and save this video. Please share this video. Uh, we need to get this information out there. Water is for drinking, water is for cleaning, and water is for cooking right? Minimum three gallons per person per day. Now, when we discuss how you can store that water, you can have something like a water brick, which is relatively small. You can fit it underneath your furniture, right? Out of sight, out of mind. Um, or you can have something like an aquatainer, right? Which can hold seven gallons of water, which work very well, right? I keep them in my own personal vehicle wherever I'm going. Um, but you can also have a 55 gallon uh, barrel, right? Or you can have an IBC tote, just standard one gallon jugs, right? But there's a plethora of ways to store water. In addition to having water prep, we should also have ways to purify that water, right? Now, if you check out our website, sanctifiedsurvival.com, we have a blog titled Water, the Elixir of Life. There are multiple ways to source water, to store water, where to get water from, and then also how to purify that water, right? There are dozens of purification methods, right? There, there's tons. Um, so if you wanna have a filter, such as a Sawyer Mini or a Life Straw, a distilling system, whatever you decide to do, you know, do what works for you. Some people have RO systems, that's fantastic. Now, if we're talking about winter preparedness, those RO systems might have some issues because your pipes might be frozen, right? So you might have to hook up a different way or, you know, figure that out. But do what works best for you, right? Preparedness is not a you know, single solution method. There are tons of different ways to do the same thing, right? Multiple ways to skin a cat. So just make sure that whatever you're doing works best for you. Just understand the strengths and the weaknesses of your preparedness plan. Every plan has them. Some plans are better at one thing than other things, right? So understanding that plan's strengths, you can focus on that and be very, very strong in this area and not be very strong in this area or you can build your plan up to be strong enough in this area and then maneuver to those weaker areas and then build on those, right? It all depends on the situation. It all depends on what is available in your area, right? The main thing is understanding 
all of the different facets of usage when it comes to that water, right? We have to understand that we have to recognize that because once you recognize the amount of usages of water, you suddenly realize I need a lot more than one gallon per person per day, right? So save this video guys, please share this video. Again, this is our series, our winter preparedness series. Um, if you are not subscribed, following, etc., please go ahead and do so. If you have any questions regarding water safety, please comment down below. Thank you all so much for your support. God bless. Stay safe. And as always, no matter what happens, stay sanctified.